Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. Once again, I'm your host, Peter Nelson, and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about gemstones. Today, what we're going to be talking about is when rubies blush. Okay, not just rubies, there are some other stones that blush, but how do they do it? Because they don't exactly get ashamed, I expect. After all, it's the Stone of Kings. Anyhow, scientifically, this is called fluorescence. Fluorescence is what happens when a gemstone or other substance is excited by light or some kind of energy, and then it gives off its own color. Some diamonds actually do this, and it typically drops the price on diamonds. Rubies do this, and it raises the price on rubies. Now, why is that? Because the fluorescence reaction in different stones is different. Sometimes it adds to the beauty, and sometimes it takes away from it. In diamonds, a stone that has fluorescence, oftentimes in the sun, can look a little bit foggy or cloudy. Whereas in rubies, it adds to the red color. So a quick introduction to what fluorescence is, is when the light from the sun hits the gemstone, you've got the visible spectrum, and you've also got ultraviolet rays and some infrared rays that hit the stone. So when the stone is hit by this extra energy, these things like the ultraviolet rays and the infrared that we cannot see, the stone can still get excited by them. And so when the molecules inside of the stone get excited, they let off their own color. And in the case of rubies, this is red. So a ruby or a piece of spinel that has high fluorescence is going to look more red when you view it in the sunlight, where it has access to those ultraviolet rays. If you're just in indoor light, you won't see it as much. So fluorescence actually makes these stones more dynamic. If you have a ruby that has high fluorescence, then you're going to have a stone that looks better in daylight, not just because more intense light is getting into the stone, but actually more color is coming out of the stone from things that you couldn't see before. How do they know that fluorescence is a real thing and not just made up by crazos like us? Well, they did a test. So the test was they took light and they filtered out all of the red rays going into a ruby. So no red. And if the red isn't there, then the only thing that can come out of the stone is not red. And on the other side of the stone, they put another filter that filtered out any kind of blue rays or yellow or green rays, basically everything else. But on this lens over here, it can still see red. So when you view the stone from this side, they could actually see red. How is that possible? If on this side, all of the red light is being filtered out of the light source, it's going into the stone and coming out, then there should be no red over here. Unless the red is coming from the stone itself. Fluorescence is some seriously cool stuff, but what causes it? There are several things that can create fluorescence, but most commonly in colored gemstones, it comes from two sources. Chromium, which most of the time we see as red or green. So the red in ruby and spinel, we see because of chromium most of the time. Sometimes it's a little bit of iron. And then the green in emeralds is also caused by chromium. Emeralds can also be colored by vanadium and also a bit of iron, but the fluorescence caused in these stones, whether it's the red in rubies and spinel or the green in emeralds, is going to be caused by chromium. Cobalt will also show us fluorescence. Cobalt, most of the time, whether it's in gemstones or in glass, you will see as a bright blue. The glaze in a lot of earthenware is actually caused by cobalt. So chromium and cobalt can both show us fluorescence. The colors that it will show to us will be a little bit different, and it may not be super obvious. Remember that fluorescence is just going to influence the body color, but it's not going to completely change the body color. In the case of rubies and spinel, it can make it a bit more bold, give it some more life, kind of a three-dimensional aspect. And in emeralds, it's the same, but it's not going to be an intense red. It's just going to cause the stone to feel like it's got this extra life. Really quite haunting. And that's with stones with high fluorescence. There are some things that can kill fluorescence, like iron. Some stones will have high chromium, but if they have high iron as well, the iron kind of extinguishes the fluorescence effect. Remember that fluorescence is caused by compounds inside of the stone when they're hit by light, whether it's in the visible spectrum or non-visible spectrum, they get excited and they release a color. But iron is basically like, no, stop that. I said stop which I think is really quite interesting. If you think about it, in some of the older varieties of Western mythology, the fairies weren't able to touch iron. Iron would burn them. So maybe fluorescence is related to fairies. Just a thought. And this fact is actually very useful for us in determining different types of stones and also different origins. For example, rubies from Thailand have a lot of iron, but rubies from Myanmar or Burma and Afghanistan do not have much iron. So Myanmar, Burma, or Afghanistan, if you put a black light on them, you will see them glow very intensely. But if you put the same black light on a Thai ruby, it's quite dull. And that's because the iron in the Thai ruby is going to quench that fluorescence. 
The same thing is true in different types of emeralds. Emeralds from Colombia or Afghanistan typically have very low amounts of iron, so the iron doesn't quench that fluorescence reaction. The black light doesn't do too much for emeralds, but if you use something called a Chelsea filter, then you can use this kind of like a spyglass. So this is just a lens that filters out certain wavelengths of light. And if you put it over your eye like so, and then you take a torch and you shine it on whatever stone you're looking at, if it has high chromium, then you will see it as a red or pinkish glow. If it has low chromium or high iron, then you won't see much of a reaction at all. So those different levels of pink or red show you a lot about the stone and give you a strong hint about maybe where the stone came from or what type of stone it is. This has many applications in a variety of different stones, but you need to know about the stones that you're looking for. For example, aquamarine. Aquamarine is colored mostly by iron, and so iron dampens fluorescence, right? We wouldn't expect to see anything with this Chelsea filter. But if somebody's trying to pull a fast one on you and they create something like synthetic cobalt spinel, then when you use the Chelsea filter and a light, then you will see it glowing. They can have the same colors, but this is a very fast way to sort out a large parcel of goods. Also, with different types of redstones. Some redstones are colored by chromium and others are colored by other things. Something like garnet can be a very nice bright red and there are some darker rubies out there. They're very easy to confuse between. But if you use a black light or a Chelsea filter, that will help you sort between garnets and rubies quite quickly. Now don't get me wrong, this is not a silver bullet, it's not going to tell you everything that you need to know about stones, but it is a very strong indicator of certain things. You need to know more about your stones. So if you're looking for rubies, this can help you, but it's not going to tell you the difference between rubies and spinel. We've got other tests for that that we've talked about in a different video. Okay, let's review. Today we've been talking about blushing gemstones, otherwise known as fluorescence to the scientific community, and this is what happens when atoms inside of a gemstone are hit by energy, whether that's from the visible spectrum or the non-visible spectrum of ultraviolet and infrared. These atoms get excited and they let off color. That color can be different from the body color of the gemstone. Fluorescence is typically caused by chromium or cobalt. You can test certain varieties of fluorescence using a Chelsea filter or a black light that's going to be in a gemologist's torch. Not all varieties of fluorescence will show themselves this way. Sometimes you need shortwave fluorescence, but that's a deeper topic. But the simple answer is you don't want somebody walking around with a torch like this with shortwave because it can cause cancer. This is longwave. Iron serves to extinguish the fluorescence effect, so if you have a stone with a lot of chromium but also a lot of iron, you may not see much fluorescence. This doesn't prove anything to us about the stone, but it does give us a strong indicator in one direction or another. And you have to know about your stones in order to understand what those indicators might be. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, tell all of your friends about it, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I enjoy talking to you about these topics, and I love that you're excited about learning about them. So until next time, I will say bye-bye. <laughs>